Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'd like to start with a quote. The ears of the leader must ring with the voices of the people. Great president once said that. Mr. President, I rise today to make it clear to everyone in this chamber exactly why I cannot support this legislation. You've heard the chants outside this chamber, not just today and last night, but many times over the past two years. Thousands of people have shown up, union and non-union, men and women, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, even their children. These are the working families of Michigan. These are the thousands of people that I would sit here to represent. When I vote no, I'm voting no on behalf of the thousands of families. Who are you voting yes for? Grover Norquist. I know he sent you all a letter asking you to support this anti-worker legislation. You are voting yes because a handful of corporate lobbyists, a handful of fat cats in the back are telling you to. That's who you work for, the powerful few, the guys with top hats and monocles. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I work for the people, for the many. I, re I proudly represent them in casting this no vote. I'm doing what's right, what's good for the people. And I tell you this, Mr. President, we will fight you. We will not let this stand. We'll fight you from Kalamazoo to Timbuktu. We'll fight you from the streets and in the suites. We'll fight you in the pit house and we'll fight you in the outhouse. And Mr. President, I'll tell you this right now, when it's all said and done, when it's all over, we will grab the thunderbolt of truth. We will grab the rod of revolution and we will have our victory. And the spoils will go to the working people of Michigan. And you will forever remember the day when you thought you could conquer labor. You were sorely mistaken. Be prepared to engage in the fight of your life. You might win this battle, but ho, 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 the wars are brewing, sir. The wars are brewing, sir. And we're coming, and we're taking no prisoners, and we're taking no border. And Mr. President, when all said is done, working men and women of this state will reign supreme. Thank you, and I ask that my comments be printed in the journal. Hello and welcome to The Young Effect. I am your state senator, Coleman Alexander Young II. It is always an honor and privilege to be here with you live on TV33 WHPR. Uh, you can all see us all around the world at www.tv33whpr.com. That's tv33whpr.com. The numbers for you to call are right here on the screen. That being said, um, please join me for a moment of silence for our fallen. We had another police officer mm -hmm. uh, who had passed away recently mm -hmm. uh, due to a training exercise. Officer Matthews, I believe, is, who just passed away. I'm sorry, the name just escaped me right at this time. Um, I'm going to get that as soon as we're talking here. But I mean, I, I just think that this is unfortunate that we having people. It, it just seems like as an elected official, because I go to these events and I go to a lot of funerals, and it seems that that's all I'm really going through right now, or going to right now. And I think it's wrong, man. And I think this young man, everything he was, everything he was going to be, every life he was going to touch, uh, everyone he was going to impact is now snuffed out. And I think it's just unfortunate, and I think it's just sad. And uh, my heart goes out to him and to his family. Uh, I think, you know, I'm sure we're going to have an investigation, make sure that this doesn't happen again and get to the bottom uh, of what happened and how this occurred. But uh, let me just say this again, and I'm going to stop looking because I can't find it. So I, but I just want to say to his to the officer who passed away and to his family, I just want to say we love you and we're praying for you. Um, and we thank God for you. And we are we are saddened. By your sacrifice, but we thank God that you had people in your family who are willing to give the ultimate sacrifice of their lives so that we can have safety and we can have peace of mind and freedom right here in the United States of America. So we thank God for you. We also thank God for all of our servicemen who all need to come home, 
who are from in Afghanistan and Iraq. Excuse me, can't, not Iraq. Excuse me, in Afghanistan. We thank God for you. We appreciate you. We love you. And we're going to continue to keep honoring you and fighting for you until every single one of you comes home. So please join me in a moment of silence for the fallen in Afghanistan, in Iraq. Please join me for a moment of silence for the fallen police officers, Absolutely. firefighters, emergency service personnel, de Officer Darren Weathers, excuse me, Officer Darren Weathers and his family. We love you. We thank God for you. We praying for you. Second precinct. Uh, the second precinct. So with that being said, please join me in a moment of silence for the fallen and for those who continue to fight on the front lines of our military and our police, our firefighters, our emergency services personnel, our bravest and our finest. We love you. We thank God for you. And everyone out there that's hurting and needs prayer, we love you too. Please join me for a moment of silence. All right, thank you for that. And with that being said, the numbers are right here on the screen. I'll read them out. 313 Please call in. Now, usually I do this solo, but I'm going to have this person on again because the topic that we're going to talk about today is a little bit different. We're going to talk about, that's right, we're going to talk about the new movie that just came out, the worldwide phenomenon, I'm speaking it, Black Panther. Wow. And that being said, I am here with the awesome, the incredible, the stupendous, the tremendous the beautiful and brilliant, and Ivory Calvert. Hello. Thank you so much. Thank How you. How you doing? I'm doing great. Always a pleasure to have Thank you. Thank you so very and Every much. time on this show, someone calls in and says, I love Detroit. I just want you to know that. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's not what this program is. And they're I like, Detroit, and they're like, man. well, when is I love Detroit coming back? I want to talk to her. You, you, you need to get out of here. <laughs> Thank they you. They call it I love Detroit. So I just let you. Now, before I begin... Uh, Brother Bay just told me that Black Panther came out on the same day as, as Huey Newton's birthday. Day after. The day after mm -hmm. Huey Newton's birthday. Yes. Now, you know, it's funny that he says that because if you talk to people who are like at Stan Lee or people the who were more. The, the day before. The day before. The day before. Okay, the day before. The day before. You talk to people who are in Marvel. Uh -huh. You talk to people who are the big ones. They will tell you that Black Panther had nothing to do with the Black Panther Party. Okay. The Black Panther movie is totally different than the Black Panther Party. Right. Even though this came out the day before Huey Newton's birthday, and in the movie, it actually began and ended in Oakland. Right. Which is where the Black Panther Party was born at. Oh. So, this, it's kind of interesting to say that the movie that had nothing to do with the Black Panther Party is so closely connected to the leader's and the actions of the Black Panther Party and the yes. people of the Black Panther Party. You know, uh, even more significant. Well, the of the Black Panther Party. Even more significant for me was the underlying question or or overarching theme throughout the movie mm -hmm. of do we in um, the name of the country Wakanda? Right. Do we in Wakanda? And Wakanda was this. African country right. that had been Hidden. blessed with this with enormous resources. Yes, with enormous resources. Just like in Africa now. In some cases, yeah, yes. It, 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 except for the last, except it was not colonized. Right. Wakanda had never been colonized, like I recently found out about Liberia, had never been colonized, and because it had never been colonized, it had never. Um, for the delays that are caused by slavery. Um, I was listening to somebody late last night on TV who said that slavery not only enslaves 
the people who are slaves, but it also enslaves the slavers because you are tied to the system. So as a result, you don't advance as far technology techno technologically right. as you could right. if people were. I think I was watching. Um, well, I believe that the, the 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 first most advanced, the first technological advancement in America was black people. True that. Because they were the most invested in, in terms of slavery and the system, and because they are responsible for producing the goods yes. and the services that were there. So the biggest technological advancement in the beginning of, really, not just in the beginning of America, but also really with America, not as a country, but America as a continent, really, was African American people. You know, the other thing that was interesting about the movie is that it said that, um, it, it had this meteor that landed and um, blessed this country with a, a substance called vibranium. Right. And that this substance has been used throughout the Marvel mm -hmm. uh, comics in other ways. Mm -hmm. it, it is what makes up Captain America's Jeez. shield, mm -hmm. which protects him. But the overarching theme, the question was... Do we in Wakanda use our resources to benefit all of our people across the continent? The hungry, the poor, black people throughout the continent. Or do we keep them to ourselves and remain safe just for Wakandans? Right. And eventually, that question is answered by the king who decides that Wakanda will open itself to the rest of the world and protect black people everywhere. And and as the story proceeds, even the main characters, the antagonists and protagonists in the in the in the plot line of the movie, their question, their um thesis is about that very question uh, because uh, the king T'Challa is his name T'Challa T'Challa and his father's name was T'Chanda yes. T'Chanda has a brother who goes to oh I don't want to give away the whole story who, but who goes to Oakland mm -hmm. and he has spoiler alert a child there and as a result of leaving that child Later, there is this grand battle, right? And and so that question of do I just serve to protect my own, or do I serve to protect all African Americans or all people African, African people throughout the diaspora? Yeah. And um, is that question of. Of, of tribalism in terms of protecting African Americans versus Pan Africanism. Yes. Are we going to yes. Protect Thank you. Everyone. Thank you so much. By the Thank you. Thank you. And Thank you. Them, and, and, and not just so much do we protect them, how do we go about doing this? Yes. Because I, I don't think, this is what I really love about this movie, I don't think that he was really that much of a villain in terms of what he wanted to do. I think he was how he wanted to do it yes. that I thought was a problem. I wouldn't have a problem with arming people from across the continent with weapons if the purpose is, self, is it self-defense. I think what, what was interesting wasn't so much what, it was how. It was the fact that he was not arming them for self-defense. But he conquest. Arm, yeah, well, he for annihilation. Mm -hmm. He was going to annihilate everyone and everything mm -hmm. based off of what happened during slavery. He got and, three and, and, yeah, and they were, And that's what that argument was about. And we're going to go into this whole argument a little bit later about you know people why are people making this such a big deal after you know they had blade in the 90s and i can tell you because they weren't having these kind of conversations when you were talking about blade you well I, well just for an example you were talking about the diaspora when just, wesley snipes is out there you know killing people from sucking their blood that's just, not quite <laughs> the same scenario you can tell that we are a movie family yeah my mother um, who was a single mom, every Saturday we went to the movies. Every Saturday. Generally we went to the movies way out in one of the suburbs and then we would stop for hamburgers at Hunter Burger in Birmingham on the way home. 
every Saturday. I went to the allergist in Birmingham, <laughs> Birmingham, Michigan at Birmingham Allergy Clinic. And then we went to the movies and then we um, stopped for burgers at um, Hunter Burger on Woodward. And then we went home. Um, so every Saturday we went to the movies. So we are a big movie family, and um, but 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 generally when um, we have a campaign going on, um, we we put off everything else. But Black Panther was important for us to go to as a family, and we had a few. Um, um, instances where we could have gone separately and seen it um, in some of the pre-screenings, you know. But we really like to do it as a family so that we can talk about it afterwards and how it impacts us, especially one um, like this movie. But we have some callers. Yeah, calls. Okay. <laughs> it's the young effect. No, that's all right. <laughs> I live in Detroit today. Hello, caller. Hello, Mr. Young. Hey, hey Eastside. This is Eastside. How you doing? Good. I'm so proud of you. I don't know how to begin this, but I want to tell you about some old people that used to come to the meetings, and Coleman Young and Nora Brown and all of those people used to come and sit at my home over here. Because wow. Because they knew each other well, and uh, they all used to eat chicken and stuff and just sit here. I have never seen people like these people in Detroit now. It's all about money. Everybody got a little money coming in, and they don't want to help the people that need help. And that's the reason we want you into office, so you can help everybody. There's not a certain amount of people you help. You help everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm everybody. so tired of them. And if Nora and all those people were living in Coleman Young, Coleman Young thought to get this city the way it was now is going back to the white folks. I'm going to be honest. The white people. They don't want us in Detroit. Somebody called me and asked to buy my lot next door for $4,000. Oh, boy. And No, I wouldn't sell it to them. I wouldn't sell it to them. I need wow. more than that. But I darn sure ain't going to sell it to them because they're going to make these houses like they were before. Wow. And inside. they don't want people living around here. They're going to put grocery stores back, the big trees back. Everything is coming back, and these people are sitting there talking about nothing. They're fighting against each other. They're fighting against you. They don't want you in there because you help the people in Detroit. And I'm, I'm ashamed of my race of people, and I was born here in the city of Detroit. I respect y'all, but I just can't go no place right now because I haven't been feeling good. And I've lost oh, I'm so weight. sorry. And so I just stay at home. But I listen to you all. And Coleman, you're doing an excellent job. Don't let nobody bust you down. Keep on doing what you're doing. And these people in Detroit are going to vote for you in any place else we can get them from. Because I will be out there to help even though I don't feel good. I'm coming out there to help you because your dad helped us. Everybody else helped us. She got, he got all these people jobs. And these people are fighting out for money. Because nobody else will ever hire them again, no place else. These are some rotten people in the city of Detroit. They don't help their own race of people, but they'll sit up there and get the money so they can go out and get drunk or get high and talk about who's helping who. They don't know nothing about the city of Detroit. The only thing they know is about money. Money that they can put in their pocket and smoke weed and do everything else they do. Well, they listen. They don't want to help anybody else. Let me, let me, but. let me, let me, let me, let me, and I'm not trying to take away from what you said at all. Let me just say this. I think that one of the things that we've got to start doing, I think, is we have to start making it, we have to reinforce the Community Reinvestment Act. And we have to start making it easier for folks who are African American to be able to get loans whether it's for business loans or whether it's for home loans, you are six times more likely to be denied according to the, uh, I think it was a, 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 a girl's report. I forgot exactly what it's called, but a report for girls, six times more likely um, in order to be denied for a home, no, black women rock, that's what it was, report. Six times more likely to be denied for a home loan because 
you are African American in this city. Two times more likely in the region. And you also more likely to be arrested, denied if you Latino as well. This is a significant problem. And I think the re particularly in the African American community, because folks don't have access to capital. You have a school system that we need to repair. One, I think we need to do I said one, I think we need to start making sure that we had tuition free college as well. That's why I'm running for Congress by doing away with a subsidy that we give Wall Street in terms of billions. And I think it's 168 billion that we need to start in order to make sure that we can take that money and invest it in tuition free college for our as a for the people here across the country. And that will help the people here in the city of Detroit. As well as make sure that we um start doing more to invest in our school districts. I think that's something that's very important. And change the laws that we have now that make it harder, that make it where people, our teachers are compensated more for going to well-to-do schools than they are for teaching in poor areas. Wow. That's something that's very important. And we also got to make sure that, listen, Eastside, we also got to fight to raise the minimum wage. You got folks working two, three jobs who can't make ends meet right now because they yeah. got getting paid enough in order to do so. And the greatest country on earth, most wealthiest country on earth, there's no reason why people are working full time and they not and they can't afford to feed themselves. We also need to do something about taking people's overtime from them because Donald President Trump has passed as a sign of order and is not fighting it that basically allows. Uh, for people, people to work overtime, because I think, because uh, no, because the overtime regulations have not been updated, and Obama had an order that basically updated those regulations, and he signed it. It expired, and Donald Trump has not resigned onto it, and the business community filed a law. Certain people in the business community filed a lawsuit in order to stop it, where basically people were going to get paid for working overtime. We're talking about $1.2 billion in wages for 12.5 million workers that are going to be affected. Most of these folks are people who take a shower after work. You know what I'm talking about, Eastside. That's oh, yeah. what's going on. I'm not excusing people for, you know, committing crimes or doing things that are wrong. It's not what I'm saying. But if we live in a society where if you are black, you are 103 times more likely and 70 times more likely if you Latino to be in a higher price mortgage than your white counterparts. If you more than likely for being arrested for the possession of marijuana than your white counterparts, even though you use it at the same rate as they do. If you are a black college graduate and you have 33% less wealth than your white counterpart who's a high school dropout. Or if you educated and you still two times more likely to live in poverty than your white counterpart. Or you're more likely to live in poverty if you are Latino than your white counterpart. This is a significant problem in terms of how people are treated economically. How they are oppressed, depressed, suppressed, subjugated, and segregated based on race is wrong. And I understand what you're saying. We need to deal with that too. But until we deal with the systematic structure and, and the criminal justice system as well until we deal with that to correct the problems of how they're affecting people who are minorities you know what I'm saying we can't have the conversation I think about you know how people are supposed to act and what they're supposed to do until we start talking about how we're going to reform the system first okay well we can't perform the system you done I'm done. Go ahead. Reform the system until the people come back together like they were when your father started this stuff in the city of Detroit. That's when we're going to get back together. As long as these people work for money and not to help each other out and not to help the seniors and put them in a home where they're supposed to be at, we're not going to have anything anyway. And these people are fighting against us. And these are people that y'all know real well. Now, when Coleman Young told us to vote for Joanne Watson, we got together and we voted for Joanne Watson. Yep. When he told us to vote for somebody else, we voted for those people, and those people worked for the people in the city of Detroit. 
They didn't work for nobody else. They worked right here in the city of Detroit. Yep. Then they took the Bobolo boat away from us. They took everything away from us. And Doug and them don't give a damn about us, excuse the expression. But as long as they're mm-hmm. in office, we're not going to have anything, nothing. Well, and I'm sorry to say that, but I wish to God you would win. Put this city back like for it Congress. used to be and help the people in the city of Detroit. District. <laughs> and God bless you, your I mother, you, and son. everybody else that's helping you out. And that apartment building that they're talking about helping these seniors out, they don't want to help the seniors out because they don't want them in there. And whoever helped them get in there ought to be shot. Mm. And, and, and look, else where they can help I, like the project. I'm running for Congress. But that place. I'm running for Congress and the Fed. I'm running for Congress one to make sure that we protect Social Security. Yes. And that we also protect SSI. Yes. And right. that, and what they talking about doing with food stamps? They talking about replacing payments by giving people a loaf of food or whatever else they talking about doing a, a box, box of food. food. That is outrageous. And they're gonna let them go because they black. Right, it's, it's like ridiculous. Those children that got killed at their school. That's ridiculous. the nicest thing I right. heard people say about those children. Because those people didn't care about that those young people that got mm. killed. They don't care about people like that. We're gonna talk about that too a little bit later. Everybody. Look, we gotta go inside. It's four forty. Okay, we gotta go. Love you. Okay, love you. Bye bye. Okay. Call. Call. okay. We gotta go. All right. Caller. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, good afternoon to both of you and happy new year. Happy New Year to you, too. Um, you know what? Um, I saw the article in the paper about them. Like, I guess they're going to get rid of the driver responsibility thing. Yes. My whole thing is this. Those people who went out there and ran a red light and ticketed for it and have been paying hard in tonight, I think they should have their money refunded back to them because they were punished over and over and That's over true. for that. Incident. That's true. And, you know, I heard, too, that, you know, some of these folks, you know, they couldn't get to work because they got this driver responsibility against them. And, yeah. You know, some folks who are relatively responsible, you know, they're real, you know, iffy about getting no, you're right. real trying to like, get to this. But uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to listen off the time. And if you could, because I know some folks, they don't see the taste some point this month, maybe this year, you can explain to them, you know, when things are going to happen and does it cover everybody and is everything going to forgive And I will talk. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Wilson. I appreciate that. Listen, first of all, I just want to say this has been the effort of many legislators. There have been people who served their entire careers just talking about driver responsibility fee. And we're never able to repeal it. And so I feel very blessed and fortunate that we are the chosen few, one that get elected to these positions and then actually have the opportunity to do something that epic. I think is I think is a really great thing. It's really true what they say. You know, when love and skill come together, expect a masterpiece. And I think that's what we created by repealing the driver responsibility fee. I just want to thank all my colleagues in Lansing, Republicans and Democrats, for working together to get this done for the greater good. I agree with you. I do think people should be uh, getting re- should get repaid for what happened. I don't know if that's something that would happen in this political climate with the Republican Party, but that's de- that's definitely something that I'll ask. You know, I'll try to come up with a I'll try to come up with a plan. You know, what I'm saying how we pay that what the cost is, how much we would owe, how we pay that back, would it be better in lump sum, would it be better in increments? But I definitely think that's a conversation that we should have. Because and I don't think that's too far over the top either. Because right now what it is is that the the fi- fines and fees are forgiven. Is that right. what it is? Right. Okay. They're certain not certainly. I think I think from my understanding it goes back for a certain amount. But like, like, or or a certain a certain period of time. But yeah, the fines and fees are forgiven. You know what I'm saying? So it's um, more like an amnesty than it yeah, is. Yeah, well, 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 no, it repeals it, but oh. it's also like an amnesty and a repeal. Okay. So it's, it, it it repeals, it gets rid of it, but it's more like an amnesty too. It's like we get, the argument was before was do we just repeal it and then we give an amnesty for like a couple weeks, or do we give an amnesty for like a couple months? I, I see. think it was like amnesty for a couple months, or if I'm not mistaken. So um, I had to go back and get the exact details, but I know it. But it's a repeal. 
Okay. It's repeal. That's a good thing. You know, somebody wanted to talk to me about what, you know, because I was saying that, you know, this is something that we've been fighting for for a very long time mm -hmm. and we've been struggling with or something in nature. And a Republican came up to me and wanted to talk about, well, you know, Governor Granholm was the one that, you know, sponsored it and put it together. And my response was, who cares? <laughs> I, you Listen, know, I, I said something else I can't say on TV, but I was like, you know, but who cares? Let me you ask you. It is done. Let That's me ask counts. you this, um, Senator Young. So, how long have you been um, in the House in the Senate? Uh, Twelve years. Twelve years total. Uh, I've been. Uh, I've done uh, four years um, in the House. Uh -huh. I mean, I did eight years. This is going on my eight year right now. So eight years um, in the Senate. In the Senate. And, and I got a twelve year record. Twelve year record. So let's talk about your record. So what okay. what does that mean when you say you have a record? Well, what I mean when I say I got a record is I've created ten thousand jobs by passing movie tax credits. I see. I've um, I've uh, passed. I've lowered people's property taxes to help them stay in their houses. Uh huh. I've passed legislation for energy cost recovery. Okay. I passed historic civil rights legislation. Historic. Making sure that women who receive mandatory paid leave, if a man receives mandatory paid leave, a woman has to receive mandatory paid leave as well in both the public and the private sectors. Uh, I've also uh, passed legislation appropriating, um, oh no, I've, I've, I've passed legislation regulating the medical marijuana industry. Okay. And... I passed legislation appropriating five hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the Charles H. Wright Museum. Okay. I passed historic legislation appropriating um, two million dollars to Focus Hope mm -hmm. and six point eight million dollars for Heat Neat. That's assistance for low heating and low energy income folks, which will allow me to draw down three hundred million dollars. For the, for the state. federal government. For the, for the state. state. As my father used to say, I bring home the bacon. <laughs> and that's, that's what good. I've been doing. I've that's been getting good. it done. That's good. Okay. Thank you so much. We've got some calls. You want to take yeah, some? Yeah, let's take some calls. Okay. We can talk about Black Panther. Hello, caller. Hello? No. Hey, um, good, good, good afternoon, fellow patriots. Hey. hey. How are you, Big Les? I'm fellow good. Patriots. It's good to see you, too. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I, I, I saw the movie, and... Um, it was very important that we have a movie like this for yeah. young people to, to uh, engage in conversation on. Yeah. You know what you said? Y'all family went to the movie, so did we. You know, oh, good. Brothers, we went to the movies every Saturday. And one of the movies that really affected us was the, the, um, the uh, movie with Sidney Poitier, The Heat, the heat of the Night. Oh, yes. It, Mr. It, it, they it, call it, me Mr. Tibbs. That's right. That line was so powerful in that movie <laughs> that we talked about that for almost two weeks, okay? <laughs> so, uh, you know, the movie, the Black Panther movie, it was such an impactful movie, and it had such a, a great deal of history in that movie. Yes, too. it did. So, uh, so I say this is the perfect time, you know, and the folks that, you know, saying, that, you know, what happened to the black movie, I mean, uh, in Hollywood, it's been stressed movie. You know, like you said, when Spike Lee uh, made Malcolm X, he had a financial uh, situation. Right. And they didn't uh, pay him, uh, I guess, uh, all the money that he needed to finish the, the Malcolm X movie. So he reached out to Magic Johnson, Oprah Winfrey, Michael Jordan, and guess what? Those funds opened up to him. They, they right. gave him the money. See, we don't have well, to I, go I really, to nobody else. I really appreciated that this was a Disney movie yeah. and that the director was a young black man, um, right. 31 years old, Brian Cooker, yeah. Cooker? Yeah. Stephen Cooker. Stephen. Yeah. And, and um, what else I appreciated was that almost all of the staff, I mean, all of the actors were black. And... Um, you know, one of the things that I really appreciated about the movie that I said is that the um, the female characters were all distinctly different, all black females, but all distinctly different women. And um, it, it was just a joy um, to watch these very powerful women who were all very different. 
that that was um, very significant. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I thought they were all great actresses. I thought the acting was was superb. Um, I liked. Uh, I, I I liked. Uh, um, I, I liked. Deny Guerrera, I think that yeah, was the she character was good. for who mm -hmm. was part of the Dora Majare. Yes, I really liked that. Like was Lupe, good. Uh, yes. who was really good. I mm -hmm. thought he, the one who plays his sister. Luke. I don't know her name, but I thought she yeah, was. she was she good. She was excellent. Played mm -hmm. Black Panther's sister. I thought Black Panther. I thought uh, Chadwick Boseman is solid as always. Yes, but I thought the scene stealer was Michael B. Jordan. Yes, he was phenomenal. Killmonger. I thought that he oh, yeah. was phenomenal oh, yeah. in that Jordan role. Very I thought that was almost Oscar uh, contention. How yeah. good he was how believable he was in that role um and also i what i really liked about this film from my pers my perspective that there was no real villains in terms of what they were trying to do i think it was how they were trying and and, and, and then both sides were extremely flawed in terms of what they did you know right. I, mean, I and and, and i also liked how the, 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 there was a lot of subtext within the, the text or subplots within the plots as well. Like when he was going through the um, the, uh, the um, ancestral plane mm -hmm. and he He's was talking, well, to, he, his he talking to his father mm -hmm. and he was criticizing right. the ancestors how they were wrong for leaving this young boy behind. And I also thought that kind of spoke to African-American fathers. I think that was yeah, a really that, big a part big of, of the Af movie. African American fathers and how fathers they had this problem and, and their sons behind their sons and things of that nature. You know, I, I, you know, in terms of uh, wedlock. You know, I really like how I mean, I, he didn't want to get too deep into yeah, that, I, and, I, and I and I appreciate that because if he went too deep into that, he would also have. They to, never got into well, that. Well, if he went too deep into that on that side, you would also have to go very deep into the side of slavery. And how that paid a part in breeding of slaves and mm -hmm. things of that nature. And I understand in a Disney movie, that's not something you really want to do. You know what I'm saying? And I, I love that scene at the at the end where he is at the United Nations and he says that Wakanda is going to be more open and share its resources with the world yeah. and its technology with the world. And um, there is another representative from a different country and he says, excuse me, uh, King T'Challa, but... Uh, what does a nation of farmers have to offer the world? And and he just smiles. And I, I think that is the story of, of black people across the diaspora. Right. That what we have offered and what we continue to offer is... Um, is is hidden and and then this one big piece that I also and want to mention than you realize in the last two months there was a study done that said that of all of the ethnic groups African Americans spend the most it is over a trillion dollars mm -hmm. of what? spending power and I think we're bigger than some countries economies seeing it with this movie. But thank you so much, Big well, Les. You know what? One one last thing. You sure. Know, it 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 all it also opened up a a uh, the foundation for many Black Panther movies to come. It yes. made a beautiful foundation. I yes. really think it's good. Movies for, for continuing yes. the Black Panther yes. uh, movies to down the road. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. We love so you. We know you love Detroit. Love you. Mwah. Bye bye. Yeah, I, 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 I really thought it was good. I, I really liked everybody had a role to play, and every role was meaningful. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, I probably would have liked to have seen more of Angela Bassett. <laughs> she was excellent. She, you know, she was beautiful, and she was brilliant in this mm -hmm. role. I would have liked to have seen she was just excellent. a little bit more of that. I don't know why. I thought that um, when they killed Forrest Whitaker, mm -hmm. I thought that was sad. You know? It was but very sad. I thought sad. that was very – it was needed in that plot. I understand that. But, you know, you just – you just know how good of an actor he is. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know, I, I guess it's just me being selfish, mm -hmm. but you just want to see as much of him of on the as screen possible as possible because of how good he is. And they have to be careful because you don't want him to be so overwhelming that he takes away from the rest of the actors mm -hmm. or the cast or the plot itself, because those two actors, and I wanted to see more interaction between Angela Bassett and Forrest Whitaker, just because it's rare that you find 
two actors of that caliber, that caliber in the same movie, same movie. in the same storyline. You're right. As those two. And to really, I mean, I mean just the look, because all the other actors were excellent. I mean, even the guy, I forgot his name, but from uh, from um, Get Out. Oh, yeah. Was, was, mm-hmm. was superb mm-hmm. in his role. And mm-hmm. I really thought, and I really thought that his role was important, too. I thought they were, and I, and I really liked how there was a, there was a scene where um, the Dora Majari, which is the protectors of the Black Panther, Panther, who, um, Really, the protectors of Wakanda. Yeah, well, Wakanda. Really, you're right, right, right. Think of Wakanda mm-hmm. and the and the seat and loyal to the country. Mm-hmm. But we and that she, was a scene from the movie, right? But when she said, when you know, when, when, when he was with the with a person who she loved turned on the country or turned against the country, and he said, "Would you kill me, my love?" Right. And she said, "For Wakanda." I wouldn't think twice, and I. But I wouldn't I, hesitate. And, and I, it, 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 I don't know if this was something that they thought, or it's just something in my mind. But I know that when I was seeing that, as great as I thought that scene was, in my mind, I know there's somebody that had to be a hesitation for to have uh, her lover's character say back to her, mm-hmm. "You like, you might be willing to die for Wakanda, but I'm willing to die for all black people." Because mm-hmm. that's what they that were was the doing. story. That was that's the story. what they were doing. You know that you, you know that's what they were about. It wasn't so much that it was that they were villains. It was just it was how they were going about doing it. But, We've got a caller. So that, that's at least Hello? what I thought. Hello, caller. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Oh, that's Brenda. Hey, Brenda. Well, let me say something. We just came back from church. We gonna talk yeah, about that too. I Go to ahead. Talk about church, right? I want to talk about Black Panther. Go ahead. And you all. Have brought it to so all my friends said that all oh, the guys are fine and black suit. Is that is that a tight suit? Are they all wearing tight suits? That's right. They said they just <laughs> fine with nappy hair tight suits. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, they were you there were some guys who were all natural. I mean look, the women in it were fine. I'm all the women in it were fine. I was talking to Ann Iris. Yeah, all the women were fine, but you know. <laughs> you were fine. talking to me. Oh, 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 I thought she was talking to me. Oh, you were ahead. talking to me about tight suits? Yeah. Yes, and fine black men. Well, um, there, there were, they were good looking black men. Oh, you mean good looking? In the oh, movie. I thought she meant. But they were, you know, I, I, I was, I was, I was excited just to see a movie filled with black people. Yeah. And um But they were good looking. I mean well, they I were all good looking now, people. And, but you know what I like most about it is it there was there was no there were not people that were perfect according to what society generally puts in front of us. Mm-hmm. And Ooh. that was what I appreciated most. Yeah. That everybody looked different, but Ooh. everybody everybody looked good. And everybody yeah. was a skilled actor that 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 was the 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 thing that i saw and and i've gotten to a point where i can recognize oprah's hand and clearly you can tell yes clearly she owns she owns disney stock clearly either Uh either 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 she was in the background or somebody was on the phone with her. You can tell. Because when you listen to, if you go online and you find um, videos of the 31-year-old um, director, Ryan Coogler, that's his name. Yeah, Ryan. Um, you, you, and you hear him talk. Who directed Fruitvale Station and Creed as well. Yes. Um, yes, yes. Just, he, he has directed two other um um what's his name michael b jordan michael b jordan movies Films, yeah. and and so um he was really good in directing michael b jordan and i i i um it, it's been a while since i've been in the movie where i was amongst our people and they were talking back to the screen mm. but they were talking back to the screen and having a good time yesterday yes, you know and i was having a good time with them listen 
we we have to go. Um, yes, I, we, do. we didn't get to talk about churches. I'll anyway. talk about the churches. I I'm love sorry. You. We love you, but they've come and told us the time is up. Listen, ready to say, Matthew, we love you. I just came from yes. there. Uh, Dr. Reverend Bill Bullock, love you. Uh, also, uh, uh, Elder May, uh, Elder Ways just came from uh, Christian Gospel Center. It was awesome. Love you. God bless you. It was you. awesome. Appreciate you. And I was at Thank Unity you. Temple this morning. Oh, yeah, you And were. it was phenomenal. Was it was phenomenal. Yeah, you know, with, Juanita uh, Moore, our Christian president and CEO. I'm Kojic. And I'm Kojic. Hey, Go ahead. Kojic. Church of God in Christ. That's right. Um, and hello to our pastor yeah. and to our church, St. Paul, yeah. and Pastor Robert Lee Harris, yes. and Mother Lois yes. Marie Lee Harris. Harris. We love you. Mwah. Nobody cares how much you know to know how much you care. I'll call me young junior, my mother, and I recover. We'll see you next time right here on the Young Effects. Soon to be your next congressman. Vote. Love y'all. Sign the petitions.